Hello, everyone. Welcome to our once again bringing you a positive aspect and the way the situation we are living in today. We thought it would be a great idea to have a topic called self love and self care from a person who is a multifacet uh, and a graduate, but he she is also our own Kiwi from New Zealand and she has done her graduation from Waikato University, but she's also a health and safety award winner. Also a TED style talk that she has done. She's a film, filmography or photography, a creative aspect to it. So what more can we expect from a creative person? Let's uncover the self-love and self-care because I believe creative people do know themselves more so they can probably give us more insights about self-love and self-care. So here we are today bringing you live here, Linda Redosinska, if I'm <laughs> spelling correctly, Redosinska. Well done. Um, but Linda, uh, welcome to our show uh, for this New Zealand World News that we are always trying to bring positive aspects to the people. Mm -hmm and always try to give topics that really people wants to listen and hear and see if they can resonate with them their own. So without making any delay further, I would like to say that Linda is a multifaceted, once again, stressing the point that she's a creative person, but she's also a management graduate and she's also having a business acumen and more aspects of what we call it as a human. Like we spend a lot of time with our emotions, intelligence and all that stuff. So that is a big part and parcel of our self-love and self-care. So we are going to uncover the topic self-love and self-care, how it complements each other or contradicts each other, but it's the same. And let's hear from Linda who is here today to give us more insights on some of these beautiful emotional journey that everybody's living in this pandemic we call it sure uncertain time welcome thank linda you. thank you so much i'm super excited to be here and um yeah this is a topic that i could spend all day talking about so i'm really right. excited to get into it um so self-love and self-care i think are really two sides of the same coin i think um mm -hmm. they're really the same thing but it's I think that loving yourself is, you know, how you it manifests itself as self-care. So I, I think that sometimes we misunderstand the term self-love. So I yes. certainly did. And I'd like to share a very quick story um, just to help sure. anyone who might be watching this, who also struggles with what the idea of self-love is. Mm. So um, at the end of last year, I had a very expensive um, remote session with a, um, a medical specialist to um, talk about my migraines, which were coming about as a result of my burnout and overwork. Mm -hmm. um, and we got through the end of the consult and everything was fine. And then she said to me, um, Linda, you are too hard on yourself and you need to love yourself more. And mm. I sort of really didn't, I mean, I couldn't really absorb that because I, it's, that's, I don't know, a <laughs> kind of confronting thing to hear from someone who doesn't know you very well. Mm. Um, but also it was just like, well, what does that mean? And so I, when she said it, I was just like, oh, okay. You know, I just sort of brushed past it. But as I reflected on it more um, and as the last years unfolded, I realized like how right she was. And I realized what that sort of term really meant. So mm when she said you need to love yourself more, I was like, well, I, I do. I mean, I don't have self-esteem issues. I'm a confident person. I know I'm capable. I'm, I, I know I can do all of these things and I'm, I'm not a, I mean, I can be shy and all the rest of that kind of thing, but I'm not down on myself and I don't have any yeah. bad feelings. And I think that mm. sometimes that sort of term of self-love gets bandied about as a, it gets mixed in as this kind of self-esteem thing, but it's right. not. Self-love mm. to me is, you know, love itself to me is a verb, like it's an action word. You have to do something to, you have to right. actively love something and, and do something to love mm. something. Mm. So that's how I sort of, that's how the penny kind of dropped for me that like to love yourself means that you do loving things for yourself. You take care of yourself, you're kind to yourself. And that's really when I finally understood it. Um, so it's not about self-esteem. It's, it's intrinsically linked with self-care. It is a manifestation of, of that. So 
yeah, that's so how is, I think of it. So is self-love and self-care, when you put it into that aspect, that is it like self-upliftment or self-development or self uh, looking after more in terms of physical appearance, in inner appearance, what exactly self-love means, really? I think or self-care means. Self-care is everything. It's a holistic entire Approach. thing that wraps itself around you. It's everything from your finances to mm. your diet to your exercise to how you, um, you know, what the clothes you wear and how you present yourself to the world. And it's about... Um, developing a relationship with yourself and examining honestly the needs that you have and the state of your life and then just making adjustments to wherever there are gaps so um, it's a self-care journey is very um, unique to every mm. single person like we we have obviously some universal needs as as yeah. biological people we need water and we need shelter and we need you know xyz but at any point in time, you your needs change and, and mm. you're the only one who truly, truly um, intimately right. knows your own life situation and what's going on. So yeah. as an individual, that's why it's so important for you to have that personal relationship with yourself. Otherwise, because no one can mm. reach in and come and save you because they don't mm. know what's going on. So mm. um, it's it's everything. It's And that's why it's sometimes quite hard for me to talk about self-care because if you look at a particular example in isolation, it only tells a very small, very tiny bit of the story. You know, mm. like when I started posting about hair a couple of weeks ago, it's important, but it's not everything. If your finances mm. are, you know, yeah. taking a dive or if you really need to look at your diet or if you're in, a, mm. in, a, in an abusive relationship, like yeah. the hair stuff is, is not um, important when you have that going on. Um, mm. Another thing that um, is helpful for um, was helpful to, for me to kind of think about the like how sort of detailed and rich the the self-care approach needs to be is to think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs mm -hmm. so there's the great big pyramid and there's about six different layers so I mean that's a really good way of navigating your sort of um, approach to self-care so everything in there is is important but and as you sort of fulfill the needs on the lower levels of the of the pyramid yeah. you move up and then suddenly other things can become available and those things become the way that sure. you would like to practice self-care at that time mm. so does like dependence and in interdependence or independent we call it and in the today's world that we are dependent but also whether it is pandemic or uncertain times or it doesn't matter it, we are still dependent and in, some are independent we call it ourselves but does that make any difference to become a self-care or to become having a self-love for ourselves do we have to become independent do we have to be more um, if we are dependent then do we want to become independent then only we can self-love or self-care ourselves or what what is your thoughts on that so when you say independent, do you mean um, that you are independently like you, critically analyzing your own situation and you take care of yourself? Yes. 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 So yes. absolutely. A hundred percent. So I yes. think that personal responsibility is essential mm. um, for a self-care practice. Obviously, I think that um, I, the thing with that is that you really need to um, get in tune with your own self and your own voice and your own mm. truth because all of these external influences can really affect um, what you mm. think you might want or what you think you might need. And it's only by going inwards that you can really mm. truly ascertain what it is that you actually want. And so if you are heavily reliant on a partner or a yeah. friend or That's social right. media or whatever you become just completely influenced by these other people Correct. and Correct. their needs and desires for you so they might want you to become a lawyer and that's not what's in your heart and you'll never be Correct. happy doing it Correct. so I think we do need to become independent but simultaneously fulfill those needs that we have to connect with other human beings and have a good support network around us because as a human being aren't we supposed to like most of the human beings they would like to follow others and they would like others to to have a say on them rather than themselves that's what our expectations are more from others than from us 
And how do you draw that line? You know, when you said, and I agree completely with you financially and other way independent, uh, looking after ourselves from all aspects, but we are so much dependent in today's world that others should talk about us, others should like label us or others should identify us. And so our expectations become more for others rather than ourselves. And what you are suggesting before was absolutely like, you have to draw a line about ourselves, independent, become independent, criti be a critic of your own, you know, mm -hmm. when you said that. And that's the appropriate rather than depending on others to be critic on you. Yeah. So, so there's an interesting quote that I, um, or mm -hmm. saying that I heard from Russell Brand a little while ago on a video I watched of his, and he said something like, um, whatever you're seeking, you won't find in someone else. Yeah. Um, and the context was in re about relationships, but I think that's important too. And when we find ourselves in situations where we're seeking external validation or guidance or, you know, whatever, we want someone to tell us that we're going to be okay. I mean, okay, let me rephrase that. When we, mm. when we rely too heavily on what other people think of us, I think mm. that's a, um, it's a, it's not a positive state to be in. That's a, it's a lower level kind of state. You, you need to really pull yourself out of that. You'll never be happy if you care too much about what other people think of you and you rely too much on external validation. And you'll always have that empty feeling straight after you mm. get whatever, and you'll have an insatiable need for more of it. So mm -hmm. once you get to a point where you're like, I don't want to live like this anymore, um, then you start to look at, okay, well, how do I fill my own mm. needs here and what is truly important for me. Um, yeah. So do you think you're the first precedent or the first uh, option or first thing that comes to your mind if you want to become, or if you feel that you want to become a self-realized, self-care, self-love, how do you let go your past? Like, do you think the past is a big contributor for becoming a self-love or becoming self-care? I do think that um, your past I think experiences it's it's hard I think there's lots of different things you can do and everyone's going to be different so different things will work better for different people but absolutely mm. I think your past has a huge huge impact on your future and how you are in any one point mm. in time mm. and I think that letting go of things is incredibly important and that's something I only learned this year just now so right. I also just want to say that that it's a long journey that you're going to be on if you go on this journey it's going to take you it's not going to happen overnight that you suddenly are this enlightened being <laughs> like everything's perfect in your life like you'll, you'll go through stages and you'll start to sort of more layers will reveal themselves to you but yes um letting go of your past is hugely important and I only really did that this year um and I did it through um sort of undertaking active um forgiveness activities which I didn't realize was a I didn't really know about that I didn't <laughs> think that was such a big deal um, and I didn't know about I don't know you if you're familiar with the personal development or self um, self-help kind of world you will probably mm. read about forgiveness in every single book that you come across like they always tell you to let go of your past and that kind of thing and I think for a long time I, I thought I had and because I was like so mentally fine and like so functional I was like yeah I mean I've compartmentalized that I put it over here it's fine I can move on um, but that's only half of the equation you really do actually need to actively forgive someone and I I don't think anybody um, is particularly good ex at explaining how you actually do that sure. um, because all that time, you know, for the last nine years or whatever, I, I had been like, yeah, yeah, I've, I've let that go. I'm not upset about it anymore, but it's, it's more than that. You have to actually physically let it go and emotionally. And yeah. the yes. first person I came across who actually explained that properly was Denise Duffield Thomas. Mm -hmm. So um, in her book, she talks about how to do it. Um, I won't share here because it's probably her yeah, intellectual property, sure. but um, mm -hmm. if anybody's looking for that information, mm -hmm. that's how you will find it. Um, yeah, hugely important. Um, and there are, there are lots of different techniques, but that one in particular was very useful for me and the only thing that's really resonated and worked in the last kind of 10 years for me. 
Yeah. So, uh, so is it that the past letting go past also then gets unstuck yourself? So you can become unstuck because you are already stuck if you are living in your past, isn't it? Yes. So I, um, I think about being stuck in a couple of different ways. So mm -hmm. you can approach it from a number of different angles. So if I'm feeling like I'm in a bit of a rut um, in my day-to-day -day life and I just need to kind of get myself together or pull myself out of something or mm -hmm. just have more discipline in my life, then I focus more on the tasks that I do in my day. And I have a bit of a checklist of things that I do. I make sure I'm drinking enough water. I'm exercising enough. I'm going to bed at the right time. I'm eating well. So mm -hmm. there, you can kind of do a bit of a reset in that way to pull, to get unstuck. Um, but that comes from like I know that because I've done so many other things and I've tried other techniques of getting myself out. So I know what works for me now. Um, something else might work for someone different. Mm -hmm. um, yeah so and then in terms of letting go and being stuck in your past yeah that's just a at some point you need to make a decision that you don't want to live like that anymore and the first step is to start focusing on something else yeah. um, whether that is your present experience or mm. um like like in the right now the moment that you're experiencing life yeah. or, right. or you want yeah. to project yourself into the future and kind of hold a vision for yourself and five years time or a month's time or whatever. So you either focus on what you want or focus on exactly what you're experiencing in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and then you will let go of the past in that yeah. sense, mm -hmm. but you still yeah. need to, there's more to do. It's not enough to just control your thoughts because you, otherwise you'll have all this baggage inside yourself energetically yeah. that you need to get rid of. I like the way you said that, okay, we have to like, eat well, sleep well, time-wise, monitor mm -hmm. yourself and things like that. But here is a question for you. Huh? It's a challenge for everyone at the moment. We are living in uncertain times and many people have let go, must have let go their past, but many people can't let go their past because they are stuck in there. And with these uncertain times, how do you motivate yourself to become that self-awareness of your own that, hey, you are not doing something right or you are doing something to live in the moment? So what do we have to do to make sure that these uncertain times can, you know, it's going to be there. But how do you detach yourself from this whole uncertain times? Um, again, just going back to focus. So I'm very disciplined in how I live my life. I'm not a monk, like I'm not perfect. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes. That's... Yeah. So what I do. How do like... other people like? Okay. People, I'm normal. Uh, let me ask you. <laughs> I'm normal <laughs> I'm not as well. <laughs> but how do I do that? How do I motivate okay. myself? Yeah, sure. So you have to have the desire to do it. You have yeah. to have the desire to want to be different, to want to have a different life. To You have to, sometimes you just have to hit rock bottom and be like, oh my God, I, I don't know. want to do yes. this anymore. I do not want to have this life anymore. Yes. And I've been there lots of times. Like yes. Yes. <laughs> you don't, you don't learn about all of this stuff by having a perfect and, you know, beautiful life. You go through mm. things and you have to figure out how to get out of them and how to cope and how to deal with it. And that's how you, you know, out of necessity, you find the tools that you need yeah. to kind of move forward. Um, so for me, it's about focus. Again, that's such an important thing. And I'm not perfect. I get things wrong, but I do have big kind of rules that I have and boundaries for myself in terms of what I do. So mm. And again, this is how I live my life. I'm not trying to suggest that this is the of only course. way or what will work for everyone. But like, for example, I don't read the news. I haven't read the news in like six years. Right. Okay. I, I shut off things that have an incredibly negative impact on me. Um, I can send you a link that you can add in the comment section for anyone who's interested in some cool. research around the effect that the news mm -hmm. has on people. Mm -hmm. So um yeah, I try and limit my time on social media. Um, and, you know, I'm glad you brought up self-awareness a couple of times already on this talk because um, that's such an important thing that you need to pay attention to yourself throughout mm. the day and watch to see what is making you feel mm. certain ways and try to avoid the things that are making you feel like crap. And, like, you know, I, I don't check my phone in the first couple of hours that I'm awake. I have my phone on 
fight mm-hmm. mode all night long. There's no technology in my bedroom. Mm-hmm. I have, I just have like kind of measures and, and boundaries in my life that enable me to kind of stay centered mm-hmm. um, and sort of stop any kind of um, negative influence coming in. It still gets to me sometimes, but um, that's definitely helped me to not become massively overwhelmed with the pandemic stuff. So don't yeah. check your phone all the time. Turn off your news alerts. Start, like just remove anything outside of yourself that is causing mm. distress. Yeah. 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 It's it's a good point that you mentioned about the media or the news. And I myself into media and I, I really can't think about a life without media or life with how do I make awareness of my surroundings? How do I make awareness of what's happening around me? Uh, but um, but you are right. Like uh, lots of things you got to let go. And just this is one of those things that you have to uncover by letting go of the system that we are currently in the system that we are living in. Yeah. So, so with the news thing as an example, like, I mean, the different news outlets, not all news is the same. It's not like, no, no, and so you have to be discerning about what you allow into your life and, and, and be smart about what you're, what you're consuming and and think Mm. about the business models that are behind Mm. what, but around the different things that are around you, you know, the, the news, um, the business model is to create sensationalist kind of news that yep. makes you fearful and puts you in a state where you are anxious and want to come mm. back and keep checking over and over again because they need to sell ads mm. and that's not some weird conspiracy theory it's as you can see like that's how it works and when you um sort of remove yourself from that and, and stop it mm. your life just becomes so serene and happy and you still find out about things people mention things like i i always know what's happening i just don't get sucked into Mm. this black hole with the black, of like yeah yeah, mm. yeah you don't get carried away with any one of the aspects or two of the aspects to just go with them you don't do that right um i guess that's the key that people get sucked into very fast into any statements or words and things like that so how do you you know like uh, become that strong resilient confident about yourself rather than the world around you so yeah I mean I same thing like I just watch to see what is making me feel in a particular way if something starts making me feel anxious or uncomfortable I know I need to stop that I need to get rid of it Mm. and if it's if it's in me like if I start spiraling because I've seen too much I just know that I need to turn the tap off and stop being so exposed to this thing so again it's all about focus and um yeah, I mean, I'm lucky that I, I have a, a life that doesn't have um, large kind of sources of stress inside of me. Like I don't have, you know, health issues or anything like that. So that's more difficult to get away from. Mm. But the external stuff I'm fine with. But I just know. I just know what the rules are. No news, no social <laughs> media, no phones in the first couple of hours of the day. Like I just know what my routine is and my boundaries. So, yeah. So tell me about your thoughts that when it comes, so you said you said very right, rightly that when you wake up, you don't have gadgets or electronic mobile and stuff around you for a, at least few minutes or few hours, yeah. which is which is a good thing. And letting those things, letting go those kind of aspects of your life. How, what, do you, what do you think that, how have you managed that to do this? to keep yourself away from these basic needy people thing. It's important without this, there is no life. Like the other day, Facebook was out and everybody yeah. thought that our life has come to stand still. Yeah. What, what would you say? How do you do that? You just have to, you just have to have the discipline. Like, um... Do you replace it with some alternatives or do you just let go? So... <sighs> I think for me, like it's, it's been a long journey too. Like I've, mm. this has been over many years that I've picked up all these different things that I do. So I didn't just wake up one day and turn a tap and then I was suddenly social media free. Sure. Like yeah. it's gradual. You, again, the desire has to be there that 
um, I want to be different. I want to be happier. Mm. I want to be, mm. I want to perform better. I want to be more successful, whatever. And mm. when you start to look at how to achieve those things, it's by removing all of that crap and by removing mm. all of the distractions in life. And so, yes, yeah. I do replace things. So like my morning routine has, you know, 10 minutes of yoga. I have a, mm. you know, I do meditate in the morning. I um, have a healthy breakfast. I like to use that time for myself. Um, but I, I replace things with, uh, I replace bad things with things that are like quite wholesome and good for me. So, um, yeah. And then I, the way that I add new restrictions or not, I don't want to, I don't want to use the word restrictions because that <laughs> yeah, makes yeah, it sound yeah. like it's a, you're <laughs> yeah, losing yeah. something, but that's um, fine. yeah, it's not, it's like, oh my God, like <laughs> I would never go back to, mm. I, I sometimes see, you know, if I'm with friends or something, I see them wake up in the morning and go straight to Facebook on their phones. I just like cringe and I feel sick. Like it is just no way to live. Like, um, yeah. So, I mean, I'm always looking for new ways to kind of live my life better and, and mm. be more peaceful and happy. So, um, I mean, I come across things like articles or someone will share something and then I'll be like, Oh, I like that. I'll try that. And so I just gradually add more into my kind of routine and my own boundaries. And that's how I kind of end up with right. a big mm -hmm. mix. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very gradual and um, yeah, you're not going to just be a different person tomorrow with a different life, but it's very, the good news about that is that you can add things very slowly mm -hmm. and start very easily. You don't have to, you know, shave your head and go and live in the mountains <laughs> do you know what i mean or do something extreme like go into the antarctica yeah i mean some people need that but most mm. people can just make very small changes to their lives which will have mm. an enormous impact on how happy and safe they feel um and over the general quality of their life because that's what it's all about you want to have a good quality of life whatever yes. that looks like for you not everyone yes. wants to be super successful but we all mm. want to be happy and peaceful. Mm. I think success is a big another topic for another day, but um, that's where people are stuck with that one word, success, and they everybody has got a different definition for success. But that's where our our topic more is my more concern is in these uncertain times. It's so important to become self-awareness. It's so important to become unstuck. It so becomes important to explore, as you mentioned just now, that you're always looking for something new to do mm -hmm. things. And that's where is the key, I guess, is to become a seeker rather than just a believer where you restrict yourself with lots of beliefs. But if you are looking for something all the time, then you are mm. a seeker and you are a curious, but it's seeking is the way of life or it's the journey that everybody human has got to live. And I totally agree that I myself being in that position of, I always like to have something new, something different, something mm. new. So it keeps me motivated to do something when you wake up and you're not waking up to the same old system that you have already embraced in your mind and body. Um, so coming back to that, uh, what's the boundaries that you have you set any boundaries for yourself in terms of your self care and self awareness and self love when it comes to that? Do you have any set any personal boundaries that, okay, I understand you wake up, you don't have these gadgets, which is good. And that's <laughs> makes your life journey. Not many people can do that because they are all dependent on it uh, as if like they don't, as if like this world will not, will not exist if these gadgets are not there. That's what they have made it look like. But for you, in terms of your achievements that you have done, and you have been multifaceted, as I mentioned from earlier, you have been into different kinds with creativity, with photography, with filmography, with the management, and you also got some awards in health and safety. What, tell me about that. What exactly? So that gives me a little bit of more perspective of who you are as a health conscious, or is it something that you, and innovated something for your health um okay so the health and safety thing um is not related at all to my self-care kind of journey or whatever it's um mm. 
so more related to my sort of more traditional work which is around industrial relations and oh yeah um Mm -hmm. so um I created a project called When I Grow Up, which was designed to teach very young children about workplace health and safety um, Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. teenagers have, or young adults between the age of um, sort of Mm. 15 to 24, have Mm. the highest rates of accidents in workplaces all over the world. Um, And you might be aware that New Zealand has pretty dire workplace health and safety statistics. We're not not a top performer by any stretch of the imagination. So... Mm -hmm. um, that project really came about um yeah it was just something that kind of came to me and it was a topic that I was interested in and um not not um hugely related to the other things I do but the other things I do helped me to um create Mm. that work so Mm. that I could create a website and all the rest of that so that's what I ended up doing my um TED talk on and how I got my award um because yeah, mm. it was a, a unique and innovative kind of approach and a different sort of way of doing things. And health and safety, workplace health and safety is not a topic that a lot mm. of people are interested yeah. in or like it's it's not exciting for most people. And mm. so, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of like that about it, um, mm. that it's a bit of a challenge and I, I was interested already anyway. But yeah, it yes, just fit into yes. my other kind of work, not to my own sort of personal work. Hmm. So what important part of your self-care, self-love, because this is all about like, you know, you are trying to even the workplace safety. These are all like part and parcel of a human's journey. And it also becomes a part and parcel of your self-awareness, self-care. You know, it it does relate to some large extent. It does, Mm. but only looking backwards. Like I didn't get into the health and safety thing because I was... Mm. um, Mm. I was and I was passionate about self-care I was bet when I was working on that that was when mm. I was at my worst in terms mm. of personal neglect so right, right and overwork so I wasn't practicing what I was preaching and w- right. yes we can look back on that journey and be like yeah it's linked but not mm. because I was thinking ahead <laughs> <laughs> yeah I get that yeah so emotions are do you think emotions play an important role in your self-care yes 100 percent. yeah and my thinking on that has changed dramatically in the last year so Mm -hmm. um I used to be the sort of person who um I guess was really um focused on controlling my emotions and um I just want to say that when you when you start getting into the field of like um or into the sort of world of controlling your thoughts and meditation and and that kind of thing and perspective it can be very easy to try to control too much and put yourself in a box and force yourself to be a certain way because there is an objective truth which is that you know perspective is everything and you have the control to perceive a certain situation in a particular way you know stoicism Mm -hmm. Is, a, is this massive world where they talk about, you know, controlling your emotions and, and not being injured by things and that you internally have the control to, um, or the ability to control the way that you enjoy or perceive or experience life, which is true. But it's, a, um, it's, it's only one side of the coin because yes, it's true that you can um, control your emotions and um, control your sort of perception of events around you you can you can say I decide that this is an okay thing I'm going to live in this sort of way and this is the these are the next steps I'm going to take but it's also true that you are a complex emotional being Mm. that has emotions that just come up and they need to be expressed and released and not stifled and repressed Mm. and if you start to kind of shut yourself down and, and force yourself to feel a certain way Um, past the certain threshold where it becomes unhealthy Mm. um, then you cause more harm than you could imagine Um, and that's where I felt I was like I went too hard the other in the direction of I can control the way I think about things and the way that I feel about things Mm -hmm. and I was neglecting Mm -hmm. my emotional health and well-being Um, so this year has been a a big kind of journey for me in, in learning how to um kind of get back in touch with that and let myself feel things and 
it's hard when you when you're a person who you know a type a kind of personality that you know wants to be successful and like do things and you have a lot of self-control mm. um you can definitely go too far in the mm. wrong direction of being like of neglecting the softer side softer side of yourself and that needs to be um sure. looked after so i just i pulled this out before we started talking it's a book called um when the body says no by oh yeah uh-huh yeah, this that's is a good one. An inc- yeah. incredible book and that's really what opened my eyes to yeah. one of the things that kind of opened my eyes to the effect that neglecting my emotional health and well-being was having on my body mm. um and so yes it's important to yes you can control your emotions but i think the important thing the more important thing to do is control your reactions to things mm. Have your emotions, like don't freak out, don't spiral, like do yourself soothing or whatever. Yeah. And then park Mm. it and deal with Mm. it later when you have time and space and privacy. Mm -hmm. But calm yourself and then think about the reaction that you want to have to that moment. Mm. And so that's where the control should be and Mm. the release should be with the emotions. That's where you should just let it out because if you don't, it's going to stay inside you and you'll it will manifest itself either as a health condition or some kind of self-sabotage that Mm. you might not even be aware of. And that will just continue to like create havoc for you. So do you think that emotions this last year or this current, as soon as you got awareness of that, that you have started becoming more like believing in yourself would, can we say that, or is it like you have, um, what you call it um you know how people try to hide themselves but then you become awareness of yourself and then you are all of a sudden you are more open and you are more come what may like you know it's very hard for someone to walk off in a meeting in a group meeting if they don't like something they are still there listening to others (laughs) You know, this yeah. is just yes. my yeah. my no, my I've experience. Ex- I've experienced like, that many yeah. times. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's better to if you don't like it, just say you don't like it. Why do why are you stuck there? You know that kind of thing. Is it something that emotions charge over us, and they say that now, just stay there, and the emotions you suppress those emotions, and that's it. Like- I think that's think tough just, one. <laughs> sorry, I, I interrupted your question. Carry on with it. Sorry. So my question was like, uh, do you, after those emotions, like uh, you, I understand totally. And I hear you about emotions and you can, and I totally agree with you that you don't have to react straight away. Mm. You can react or uh, taking a pause and then revisit it because nobody's going to hang you. But people no. have got so much impulsive that they want to act and react fast which lets them into more kind of multiple complexities. Yeah. Um, so what are my question was like, did, does that have, does that have realized that you have started believing in yourself more than what it was before? I think you've got lots of things in that question, lots I of know. different topics for me to touch on. So I'll answer them as I remember them. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of like belief of myself, I don't think, I don't think that's changed. I always was confident in myself and I could, I I knew I could achieve things that I wanted to, if I um, wanted Mm -hmm. to, and if I was dedicated and I worked hard and all the rest of it, I never had any shortage of faith in myself. I think my personal self-talk has probably improved. Like, um, but even then I was always, I had developed already a practice or the framework to kind of um, nip any, doubtful thoughts in the bud and sort of talk myself back into a confident state um i think what has changed for me out of the work that i've done over the last year um would be that i trust myself more yeah and i Mm. know that i i won't betray myself in the sense that i Mm. will overwork to oblivion or harm so yes i trust Mm. myself more and that i know i always have my back Mm. and i know that i can look at a situation and and um know for myself accurately if it's time to push or time to rest or if i'm overdoing it or if i need to pull back or what what's going on so i trust Mm. myself that i'll give myself a break and look after myself Mm. if i need to um so that's um that's been a good thing that's come out of this year 
Um, yeah. And I've already forgotten the other things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, no. So basically, like believing in yourself with the emotions that you are into and you have controlled your emotions quite now. So yes. you are in a journey now where you have understood and you have always trusted yourself, but then yeah. maybe your awakening has become more powerful or more trusted in, yes. that, in and, that regard. And I've remembered some of your other question now too. So about the um, sort of... Uh, like hiding yourself. Yeah. Like so hiding your true yourself, you know, like I'm just writing these things down. <laughs> you know, like as I was giving you an example, like uh, in a meeting, you know, you try to hide yourself because you, even though your emotions, you don't like something, yet yeah. you are stuck there. So and you don't want to express. That's got a couple of things going on too. Mm. Like that's, I can't, that's a complicated question. So the impulsive oh. part of your reaction to that is an ego driven thing. Mm. So whenever you're like, oh, I'm annoyed, I'm going to go do this thing and I haven't thought mm. it through very well, that's an ego response and it's not True. helpful or anything. And you need no. to you need to stop and pause. And if you're in a state where you're so worked up in a meeting that you explode or you say mm. something you're going to regret, like you really need to take some time out and really honestly have a look at your situation, think about and reflect on what made you so upset and what else is going on in your life because probably it wasn't that thing that you're truly upset about um and there's something else going on that you really need to deal with like nobody should be at that edge where they um lose control of themselves in a meeting at work like <laughs> yeah yeah if you're at that stage like you need to really yeah. take some time out to look at your life um mm -hmm. the other thing is that i want to say about um sort of being your true self in meetings i think that I'm a firm believer in picking your battles. So mm -hmm. I don't get sucked into kind of drama if I don't need to. Yes. Um, often I will just be silent in meetings, even if I disagree with what's going on, because mm. number one, I don't care enough about what's going on. Mm. Um, or I just choose to not reveal that whole part of myself. You don't have mm. to be, um, you know, you don't Expressive. have to. Expressive. Yeah, yeah, you, you don't, don't have, have to, to spill your guts all the time and be super mm. vulnerable in a work situation. Um, mm. There's no, there's nothing inherently bad about keeping some parts of yourself to yourself. Like mm. I think recently it's become really popular or um, mainstream to talk about authenticity and vulnerability at work and yes, that kind of thing. Yes, and yes, yes, that's that's good, but also you don't have to do mm. that. Like mm. it's okay to keep some parts of yourself to yourself to and yourself, not reveal yeah. everything and. Mm. Um, not being your true self in every single situation is not mm. a reflection of you being dishonest or um, yeah. it's not a bad thing is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, and yeah, in terms of hiding yourself, I think. Um, does, does hiding, uh, my question is, does hiding creates more issues around self-love or self-care? Only if you're hiding from yourself. Mm, that's or the from, key thing isn't or it? from difficult conversations that you need to have around mm. boundaries so mm -hmm. if you're hiding yourself in a an intimate relationship with a partner yeah that's a problem if you're yeah. hiding yourself in the workplace and it's a again like we need to sort of unpack the term hiding yourself is mm. what does that mean does that mean you're not advocating your, for yourself when you have a boundary mm. breach or does that yeah. mean you just don't tell them about what you do on the weekends like mm. one of those is fine the other one isn't like yeah. um yeah it's it's always always up to the individual that's why self-awareness is so important and yes. reflecting yes. on your situation and being like okay mm. why did i do that am i am i hiding from myself is there something i need to deal with here or am i just is what i'm just, doing yeah. okay yeah, because nowadays you don't know. Everybody has got a mask on their face and you don't know whether they are true self. <laughs> and so, as you said, like, you know, the media example, like they have putting totally wrong directions. They are misleading. They are yeah. having that kind of situation. But as a human and as ourselves, as our own life, as our own journey, like if we try to hide from yourself your own issues, then obviously you are hurting yourself which means you're not taking care of yourself but when it comes to some other person or other thing which doesn't really affect you directly or internally 
then you can get away with it. But it's still for people who are emotional, people who are sensitive, that it still becomes a big issue for them. So, you know, when you, when you are here to care about yourself, but you are also here to care about others and around you and surrounded by you. So how do you deal with this kind of self-care or self-love? Yeah, I mean, I think it's difficult, like, again, about hiding yourself in different situations. Like, we, mm. I read a quote a long time ago. I can't remember who it was by, but it was something like, there are as many selves as there are people. So, like, mm. you are a different person in all the different kind of scenarios you find yourself in and the different mm. contexts and environments, and you're affected by all sorts of things like relationship dynamics and all sorts of things, power, that kind of thing. Mm. Um I think that it's okay to reveal different parts of yourself in yeah. those different situations. And it doesn't mean that you're mm. hiding yourself. Also, I should say as a bit of a disclaimer that I am a very private person. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> so like I sit on the end of the spectrum where I'm like, I would prefer not to reveal too much about myself generally. Like, mm. right. and so I'm quite happy to sit back and, and only reveal parts of myself to people who feel safe mm. in an environment that feels safe for me. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm happy to have hard conversations with people, but it needs, I need to feel like it's worthwhile and that mm. it really is yeah. required, you know, you know, like in yeah. order for the relationship to be maintained or whatever. Yes. Yes. No, I agree. So that's good. So tell me what's Linda's uh, thoughts currently you, since you became in, more awareness you have achieved lots of things you don't have to do this and that and but you still have to like satisfy yourself more compared to what others think about you what you think about yourself is more important than what others come secondary am i right in saying that for you currently? so are you asking if other people's opinion of me is yeah has no bearing on me or no is is it is it the prime importance or is it the prime importance for you is what you think about yourself? hundred um, percent. But yeah. I'm not immune to, you know, mm. gossip or something like that coming about that makes, that does hurt or sting. I just don't True. try and mm. find that. So, yeah, I mean, of course I, yeah, I, I just try to have, that's why I try to shut out as many of those external kind of um, yeah. influences as possible. And that's why so I asked that, you that question. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, no, hundred percent. So mm. um, I do my own um, feelings and thoughts about myself are most important, but mm. not to the point where I'm some sort of narcissistic monster and I go about, you know, mm. behaving however I want with no regard for anybody else's feelings. Like I care yeah. about how other people feel, mm. um, and I think I can. I can. I got to that point by um, just trusting myself and my own behavior and knowing that I always will do the right thing and so if somebody is offended or thinks poorly of me it's because not because of anything I've done it's you know like it's their own thing so that helps as well if you're someone who yeah I mean there's lots of there's lots of layers to that yeah. but ultimately um I'm secure in myself enough to yeah. not worry too much about so I've got here a conf conflicted question for you and I mm -hmm. wanted to hear from you we are living in uncertain times. This is so-called pandemic that we are now more almost two years, waiting 20 months. Yeah. Um, and we are living this journey. And we have been hearing all this time is kindness. We are hearing this all them is looking after each other or taking care of each other or, you know, helping each other or uplifting each other and looking out for each other. In this context, if I have to put a question to you, like is self-care now directly relates to others or is self-care and self-love is still remains with us as our individual but then it does affect the others who who are living with us and who are surrounded by us so is it become more selfishness when it comes to self-care self-love or is it like, okay, you have to look after yourself, then only you can look after others. What yeah. would be your thoughts on it? Um, a couple of things. So 
when I see someone who's really, um, really not looking after themselves, I, I will say to them quite literally, like, you are mm. the most important person in your life. And I mm. think that some people yes, get this, I like, yeah. cringy response where it's like, it's almost mm. taboo to say that in our society. As if yeah, it's, it's some a sort of, yeah, 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 like, as if it's some sort of personal failing or like a yeah. character defect that you would want to <laughs> prioritize yeah. yourself but it's 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 essential like i mean you have to take care of yourself if you are depleted or neglected you can't care for anybody else mm. um but i do just want to say something and that i read somewhere um i'm not taking credit for this quote but it was something like um you know there's a duality around it of like yes self-care is important and you should go and do it but mm. the way that we engage in self-care practices can be selfish if they're Mm. Um, undertaken in a particular way I think most people don't approach anywhere near mm. that kind of level of where they would yeah um where whatever they were doing to look after themselves would impact negatively on someone else I think we're much more much, yeah. weighted towards the end of mm. you're just not, not doing enough um mm. so I don't think people need to worry too much about being selfish um mm. by um by practicing good self-care and if you're a parent um you know it's it's important to um, have a good self-care practice because you're modeling those boundaries for your children and they're going to see you look after yourself in the way that you you know hold space for yourself and and have healthy relationships and boundaries with other people and then they will go and do those things too in their yeah, own lives yeah. and um back to this book here um mm. a, a huge part about that is about having boundaries and looking after yourself and not putting every single person around you ahead of your own needs. So, yeah, I think it's incredibly important. And um, I think most people don't get anywhere near um, practicing self-care at a level where they have anything to worry about in terms of being truly selfish. Yeah, no, I love that uh, quote, that book that you were mentioning. And I think that's a different topic. And another day, I would love to uncover that. Being yep, spiritual sure. myself, realized uh, when your body says no is very important. And the deeper meaning to me is I always say that, you know, how come you don't sleep at 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. or 10 p.m.? And why there is no pattern or why there is no time? And I said, I exactly quote that word that says when your body says no. So I use those terms. That if my body tells me to eat, I have to eat. If my mm -hmm. body tells me to sleep, I have to sleep. If my body yeah. tells me to drink, I drink. So that's a different way of a journey that I have adopted and that I live my life that way. Uh, but yes, um, that's uh, for another day. But coming back to this um, self-love and self-care, I got great insights from you, Linda. It was amazing to see. And I believe this is all your latest or past experiences that you have been sharing with us and giving your some of the tips which probably our viewers and listeners might resonate to some or the other extent and if they have got any questions please they can write and we will give Linda's information and email so that you can actually write to us if you had any question that you would like to seek some sort of clarity or some sort of answers around that. So Linda, once again, it was a great pleasure to talk about this topic, which I had in my mind for a while. Mm -hmm. And it was good to see that what uh, you have shared with us, your insights to help us and help me as well so I would love to have more conversation on this um, at a later stage. We can bring up to our viewers with a series of these topics that we have started. Um, and it's nothing, as you rightly said, that it's all about, you know, discovering yourself, uncovering yourself, seeking yourself and putting yourself into that exploring mode rather than following mode. Is that sure. what the answer I take it from here? the message yeah. that you want to give any Absolutely. last words yeah, any last can, words um yeah just take care of yourself and realize that you're not going to be perfect um it's going to be a lifelong journey but it's going to be the most rewarding and wonderful thing you could possibly ever do for yourself and everyone around you thank so, you linda thank and you. for our listeners uh, we are going to bring back once again linda for another topic, which is a burnout. So watch out for that. And we will be, uh, we will be coming up with that topic very soon. So once again, thank you, Linda.
Thank for you so your much. Absolutely pleasure and delighted <laughs> to have you. <laughs> Thank it you. I really good. enjoyed it. Thanks a lot.